This is Arizona Forum, a weekly conversation focusing on the issues affecting the Grand Canyon State. Now your host, State Representative Jay Lawrence. Wherever you are in the state of Arizona, of course, I don't know that I should say that since we get emails from Oregon and California as well, but wherever you are and whatever station, the station on which you're hearing us, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We're welcoming back Mosky at the Movies tonight. We didn't get everything covered last time, and I think we're going to make a, a regular feature of Mosky with um, Hollywood rumors. But first of all, hey, Mosky, welcome. Hey, happy to be here. I love hearing that. That's music to my ears, Jay. Music well, to my ears. Well, it's so, so good. That. It's so good to have you join us. The thing we didn't finish, and oh, I wanted to cover uh, the film's that are up for Academy Awards, and I want you to give right. a, an explanation of each one, not just give an explanation and an opinion on those films, if you would, Mosky. Absolutely. Okay, now, no, we have nine nominated best films, nine out of ten. We've only nominated nine this time, right? And so you want me to just kind of list each one just real briefly, like just kind of go down the list and to tell you kind of my assessment of it, Jay? Yeah, and tell us a little bit about what the film's about, because... There are yeah, many yeah. who do not see these films, and maybe your comments will say, boy, I've got to see that. Or not, correct, or don't <laughs> see it. Okay, so the first first one on my list is Call Me By My Name, Call Me By My Name, and do not see this, because it's a very hard film to watch if you're straight to see two gay guys making out. I'm not homophobic. I'm saying it was hard for me to watch two gay, gay, gay guys in a very serious film, who did great performances. These are two straight guys, by the way, uh, Army Hammer, Timothy uh, uh, Chalet, who uh, did phenomenal performances. It's just gay relationships that takes place in France. You know, that's what it is. Uh, but it's nominated a couple, you know, it's just, uh, you know, that's Hollywood for you. That, it is very politically it, correct to nominate uh, right. that film. Exactly. So moving on, Darkest Hour, about Winston Churchill. Uh, his Darkest Hour, of course, during the Dunkirk Raid, or Escape, rather. And the interesting thing about this Academy Awards, this 2018, is there's two movies really about, about Dunkirk. The movie Dunkirk and Darkest Hour, about Winston Churchill in that hour or a couple of hours or days, actually, uh, dealing with the Dunkirk situation, trying to evacuate Dunkirk so the troops wouldn't be killed. Of, the vast majority of U.K. troops who would have been decimated. Uh, you know, it's interesting. When you watch the the uh, previews on television, the promos, commercials for uh, the films, he really looks like Churchill. He, what a great... Doesn't he? Great job. He, Gary, Old, Gary Oldman, a phenomenal job. And honestly, I, think, I really think he's going to win Best Actor, in my opinion. Phenomenal. What an actor. Have you seen? I mean, I want to put you on the spot, but have you seen no. uh, Darkest Hour? No. Nope. Okay. You, I, I think you'll love it. No, actually, it was a very tedious film to watch, but the performance was brilliant. Absolutely terrific. It's and on my list, Mosky. Yeah. And uh, it did win for an acting, uh, Golden Globe for acting, uh, Gary Oldman, and for, what was, uh, hang on a second, I'll just take a second, and for a Critics' Choice Award and SAG Award. So just so you know, it's, I think it's a lead, it's leading for the best actor. Okay, moving on. Uh, Dunkirk, Christopher Nolan directed film. To me, um, a, a terrifically shot film, but very dull and boring. When you have a concept where um, troops are trying to save themselves from a, an attack from the Germans, it's not an interesting film, but it was interesting as far as the cinematography. I just thought it was boring. You know, I just didn't, I just think it was very overrated. Uh, and Christopher Nolan, disappointed. You could see there's nothing personal about the movie uh, that, he, that he would find this uh, personal attachment, Jay. So, very disappointed. It's just overrated. It's not really interesting. And it's kind of hard to hear all the accents and stuff like that. I mean, I get the gist of it. You know, they're saved by the personal... I'm not blowing it for you, but they're saved by the personal boats in uh, in the U.K. harbor there. That was due to Winston Churchill putting that owner out to get civilian boats to save the troops, I believe 300,000, on the beach there, Dunkirk. You're right. a harsh critic. A harsh oh. critic, Muskie, but that's why I like hearing you. Oh, my God, if you only knew it. Let me just say this. I just lost a friend 
uh, who emailed me was pissed off at something I said on this uh, blog, by the way. So just know, I, I just tell like it is. When it comes to Mosque at the movies, you know it's it's like unfiltered stuff, Jay. Right. Your listeners can get right now. But they're going to hear what I have to say. Okay, so Lady Bird. Lady Bird takes You forgot as, uh, Get Out. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. well, no, no, we'll get into that. Okay, Get Out. Okay. Get Out it is a hybrid movie. It's not just a horror film. It's a drama. Uh, it is. It has a big statement. I love this movie. It has a big statement, which is how black people, and look at this thing straight up, how black people view white people, how they view black people, meaning just as you know, somebody with a physical body, to put a you know, white person's brain on top of this physical specimen, if you will, just kind of use their body because it's very athletic. Uh, you know what I mean? The, so it's it's a really morbid, and I'm not saying not true. You know, it's just a black person's experience of how white people view them, and that's what makes it so um, contemporary, so riveting, so engaging. Uh, you know what I mean? So white people white people can watch it too and kind of get the gist, and it's like. Wow, you know the stereotypical images of black people, and so it's uh, white people it's, it's thinking. Riveting. White people thinking all black people are athletes. Yeah, like yeah, it's really what it comes down to is taking a, a black person's in this. This um, I'm not blowing it for people, but in this in this whole this upstate part, I believe it's New York. This group of I would say almost redneck people in this this clique, very white bread. Area and they take these. Uh, I'm blowing it for you here, and everybody else. But they take these the, the black guys. They decapitate them and put a white person's head and brain on them. And there's this guy. He's a neurologist who does this demon, demonic, demonic things. And then you know that lead character uh, who uh, is uh, well, just, he's nominated too as, as well for the lead actor in this in this movie. Um, uh, it's just it's just a terrific look at white people's perceptions of black people. Musk, black you've, people al- you've already blown it for us, so so yeah, go ahead yeah. and tell whatever you <laughs> whatever you I must. I know, right? I mean, I, I mean, how how can I, let me just say this? Okay, I'm going to spill it out. How can I review a film? I'm going to just go and spit it out. It's hard to review a film without telling like it is. You know what I mean? Right. And so so anyway, so Daniel Kaluuya is nominated. He's the black guy. Terrific. And what's funny is in real life, people. Black people come up to him and go, my God, you're it's so, thank you for speaking up for black people. And he goes, no, I'm not a representation of black people. You know what I mean? It's kind of funny, like he's a therapist. But anyway, it's just, uh, it's, uh, and by the way, the girlfriend of him, Daniel Kaluuya, black guy, is played by Brian Williams' uh, daughter, Allison Williams, by the way, as a side note to that. But it's a fascinating study in white people's view of black people and how they've been, you know, trying to, again, take the black person's body, decapitate and put a white person's head on it. It says a big statement about really how how uh, society views black people. It's very it's fascinating. I, I think it's engaging. Obviously, think, you like the movie. It, it, the, yeah, it did, but it's not my favorite. The favorite is not even nominated, which is I Tanya about Tanya Harding growing up. That's another story because it's not even nominated. It should have been. It's fraught and tripped off. And I think that was the best film. Okay, moving on. The Post. The Post stars Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks, and Tom Hanks plays Ben Bradley. The uh, uh, late editor of the Washington Post has to do with uh, with the Supreme Court saying you can that they can print the uh, Daniel Ellsberg papers, the Ellsberg papers, which was uh, getting out the a study about the Vietnam War that was a secret study and it got out and New York Times printed it first and then the Washington Post went to the Supreme Court six to three judgment to get it out. That was fast. This is before Watergate, you know, a year before Watergate, before right. the Washington Post brought the story in that. Uh, but it's fashion like it's not a great, it's not as good as uh, all the president's man doesn't have that riveting, forward moving quality about it. But it is a, I think it's a very uh, engaging movie and it says a lot about freedom of speech. That's a, the post, okay. And then by the way, um, uh, Tom Hanks got ripped off. He's not nominated, but Meryl Streep is for Best Actress. Just so you know. Let me take a very quick break. Right. Yeah. Mosky yeah. at the movies. We've still got films to go, and I hopefully we'll be able to get to some. Hollywood gossip, but if we don't, we'll get to it next time. This is Jay Lawrence, and I'm glad you're here tonight. Mosky at the movies, David Moskowitz. David joins us, and uh, well known uh, on the internet for all of his critiques and for his discussions of various Hollywood stars, and we're going to 
get a chance in the next few weeks. I'm going to make uh, Mosky a, a regular feature of our show oh, every few weeks. Appreciate that. We've still oh. got Lady Bird, Phantom Thread, yeah. uh, Shape yeah. of Water, Shape and of water. three billboards three. outside yeah. Ebbing, Missouri. Exactly. So let me just run through this quick so we can get to the gossip. Here goes. Shape of Water. It's about a top-secret research facility in the 60s, a lonely janitor forms a unique relationship with this amphibious creature that's being held in captivity. Now, that woman is a deaf, they call her deaf mute, so she can hear people, she can't speak. But um, the actress who I think is going to win the best actress is Sally Hawkins. Okay, to me, Jay, it's just, it's just like taking the creature from the Black Lagoon and a relationship between the deaf woman and this creature. And I'm like, why is this film being so lauded? I don't get it. By the way, this film is, has the most nominations, um, uh, has 13 nominations. It's crazy, you know what I mean? And it's won a lot of award, other awards, uh, 23 out of 35 other awards, SAG Award. DJ quite a award, bit, a, quite a, a bit. A, a shoe and a win, uh, the best picture. Okay, moving on. Phantom Thread, that is with uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, supposedly his last movie, he's retiring. That's it, done. Set in the 1950s London, Reynolds Woodcock, that's uh, Daniel uh, Day-Lewis, renowned dressmaker's fastidious life is disrupted by a young, strong ruled woman, Alma, who becomes his muse and lover. Okay. I fell asleep several times throughout this movie, okay? Huh. Boring. I don't get it. To me, it's like the Andy Warhol of creating dresses. I don't get it, man. You know, it's one of the, it's just, I'm like, it's so boring. So what? So he creates dresses, and what is it? Is there like an analogy between him creating dresses on this woman who, she has a perfect figure, you know? So he falls in love with her. She tries to poison him, but not kill him. I, I just did, blew it a little bit for some people. Um, I don't get it, man. It's just a character study, and it's not his best film. Lincoln was really good. Did you see Lincoln? No. Did you see Lincoln or My Left Foot? No. Well, yes, so, I okay. did see well, My Left Foot. I yeah, did. Yeah, I think he won an Academy Award for that. But the one I know, saw and loved with uh, with him, and I told you this last oh, week, yeah, was the, uh, yeah. the Comanche or... Oh, uh, Last of the Mohicans. Last, last of, Mohicans. of the Mohicans, right. Yeah, excellent. Okay, I don't think on. we have we have 23 tribes... In Arizona, and I don't think we have the Mohicans. In fact, I'm fairly certain we don't. Okay, that's Is that some, yeah, just right. an aside. Uh, exactly. So, any moving on, boring film, I don't get it. Uh, but that's Hollywood for you, the Academy, 6600 member Academy. Moving on, three, okay, this film now, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. This stars uh, Francis McDormand, Woody Harrelson, Sam Rockwell, okay? It's a mother. Who per- this is a mother who personally challenges the local authorities to solve her daughter's murder when they fail to catch the culprit. So she puts up these billboards uh, on the side of the road, and uh, it just, to me, left me with a lot of questions, Jay. And this film, by the way, is nominated almost as much as The Shape, Shape of Water is nominated for 13 Academy Awards, uh, but this movie is nominated for 13, excuse me, um, I'm sorry, give me a second here. The Three Billboards is nominated for... Give me a second, give me a second, give me a second. It's nominated for seven. So what I'm saying is, I think Shape of Water is going to win Best Picture, but this is second to that. It's won a lot of other awards from other festivals and other awards uh, shows. I just had a lot of questions, man. You know what I mean? I think I love uh, Frances McDormand's character, but it didn't have a lot of range, and she still got nominated for Best Actress. And and um, Sam Rockwell, too. I just didn't dig his character, but he still got nominated for Supporting Actor. All right, so let's move on, Jay. Uh, Lady Bird, this is the last one. Lady Bird takes place in 2002. An artistically inclined 17-year-old girl becomes of age in Sacramento, California. This is uh, the director's first-time director, Greta Gerwig, uh, former actress now directing a wonderful portrait of a girl in again, 2002, contemporary times, growing up in Sacramento. And this woman who played main character uh, is Searshe Ronan. I hope I pronounced a butcher the name. She is an Irish actress. She was in Brooklyn. Uh, did a great job last year in that. Was nominated. Fantastic actress. You would never know she has this Irish brogue accent. She speaks, you would think, and we talked about this, you, you had been to Sacramento, I haven't, but you would think you've been in Sacramento listening to her speak and growing up in Sacramento and hating it, wanting to get out, you know. Uh, Lori Metcalf is also her mom. And um, I had some issues with the storyline, you know, some things uh, in it. Uh, but it was a very interesting character study. An independent movie had a great feel to it, Jay. I think it's terrific. It's not going to win a Best Picture. Nominated for five awards. By the way, By the way you and I both yeah. know Bill Strauss, uh, who oh, passed, yeah. passed away. Yep. It was it's yeah, Bill, yeah, Bill Strauss, former ADL, Anti-Defamation League director for many years, 
Yeah, we had him on. You know, when we, we worked together, we had him on a lot you know, on KTAR, and uh, he also had a show on KTAR as well, right? In the evening, yes. game 12. Well, right, it was yeah, too bad. He was a terrific uh, a friend of mine and died of cancer this past week, and it's too bad. I, I yeah. knew that you knew him as well, and I'm, I yeah. guess we yeah. all knew of his passing. All right, now then. Big loss, yeah. Mosky at the movies. The, yeah. winner, the winner is... I, Tanya. No, it's not even nominated. No, the winner is going to be uh, Shape of Water. Okay. I, w- I really I want Lady Bird to win, but it won't. Why? It's an independent movie. Uh, Shape of Water's won a lot of other uh, contests uh, in the award season before the Oscars on March 4th. So, therefore, I think Shape of Water is going to win it, not three billboards. How about you? Do you have, I mean, you haven't... I have no uh, idea. Is, anyway, so I that's, never that's, even that's, guess at these. In fact, I stopped watching... Uh, all of the award shows when they all became um, political uh, oh, viewpoints, uh, and I said, I don't need that. Yeah. So I don't watch any of the award shows anymore, except I watch the Country Music Awards. I know uh, they'll be okay. Yeah, right. At least they're going to be a little more conservative bent right. than, uh, than this show. And by the way, I hope Meryl Streep does not win so she gives a speech. And I hope Oprah, no offense to Oprah Winfrey, I hope she doesn't get like some kind of award and gives another speech about me too. I don't, you know, we hit, there's a backlash now. It's like we're tired of it. It's, it's, look, it's horrible when women get sexually harassed, but it's just like it's uh, gone way too far. I'm not the only one who says that, you know what I mean? From guys who just, you know what I mean? So it's just now like a backlash against the Me Too movement. And for her to get on there, I don't want, we, would, we don't want to hear a political speech. All of the things that they say uh, against a president for whom I have oh. ultimate respect really bother me. So I, I don't want to right. listen to people. And their ratings have gone down dramatically. Yeah, their ratings are down. Yeah. That's true. Last year as well, and the Grammys recently. Remember that all the whole thing. Yes. You know, th- those big time down, big time. One of the lowest ever, I think, in twenty years. Grammys. Okay, Mosky. Some of the so, good. Okay, okay. Some of the Hollywood rumors. All right, you're okay. Now, new Scottsdale resident Harvey Weinstein. You probably ran into him at uh, the Sanctuary Resort there. <laughs> TV <laughs> no, I haven't run yeah. into him. No. Oh, oh yeah. If, if you do, slap him in. The if car. I do, I'll run over him. Run over him. Somebody slapped him in the face, by the way, at the Elements Restaurant. Oh, is that right? Resort. Yeah, do you remember that? TMZ showed the video. It's pretty, pretty funny. Hilarious. All right, so Harry Weinstein uh, and the Weinstein Company being sued by the New York Attorney General. This is story today, Jay, for alleged civil rights violations in the workplace. Uh, just filed against uh, So Harvey and his brother, Bob Weinstein, Atari Company, allegedly violated the state civil rights laws and human rights laws during the disgrace movie producer's time there. Um Oh, and, and accusing Harvey Weinstein persistently sexually harassing women. So that's happening now. We'll see how that goes. That's what, oh, that's going to hold up the sale of the Weinstein Company. You know, they have a quite the uh, what we call a catalog of films. You know, the Quentin Tarantino movies, um, the King's Speech, all kinds of films that Harvey Weinstein has produced. All right, moving on. Eddie, what, you want to say anything about that, by the way? No, I just know that uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein is evil. And look how many of the other oh. Hollywood moguls fall into that evil category. Ooh, there's a couple of them, you yes. know, there's a couple of them, yeah, I tell you, it never ends, uh, unbelievable, he's the worst of them, I think 91 women came out, it's all kinds of horror stories, this, that guy, Indeed. all right, o- OJ, your favorite, um, a football uh, player, uh, yeah, <laughs> you see him as a football, I see him as a tainted football player, big time, all right, OJ, you know, lives in Vegas, uh, just got out of prison after nine years, he just got 20K in cash from Sasha Byron Cohen, the actor who played Borat, uh, in a Vegas hotel to play a part in a movie. Now, O.J., apparently, according to his attorney, would not do anything unless he gets paid cash. Now, last time O.J. was in a hotel, remember, it was at the Palace Station in Vegas, and he had two goons with guns and trying to get back his memorabilia. Remember that? And that caused him to be in of prison. Of course, yes. Years. Yeah, so now this, he goes in a hotel and gets the cash. But, but the question is, Jay, why would anybody cast this guy in a movie? Why? And why would they pay him in cash when there's a man here who works at Nordstrom uh, in uh, oh. in Scottsdale who is the father oh. of a person murdered, uh, if indeed O.J. Simpson committed the murder, the father uh, keeps suing him for every penny he gets. Yes, Fred Goldman. And by the way, Fred Goldman's attorney said in the story, TMZ said, you know, we get we should get that money because it's part of the civil suit. Yes. So I don't know what's going to go on. All right. 
so that's very good. Great. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, and uh, Matthew McConaughey, uh, he is a big time a Texas football fan. What did he do? He put a full page ad in the Austin American Statements to do what? To congratulate a native of Austin, Philadelphia Eagles quarterback, Nick Foley. Foles. Nick Foles. Remember last Super Sunday? Remember Very Super good. Bowl, Jay, right? Yeah, so 41-31 win over the Patriots. So big. I thought it was kind of cool that you think that Matthew McConaughey spends, I'm sure he has the dough, but has this full page ad in the Austin newspaper there congratulating a native Austin who now is quarterback for the Bulls. Mosky at the movies. That's all the time we have. But I'll tell you what, Mosky, I want yeah. to do more Hollywood rumors. So in the next couple of weeks, I'll call you back and we'll do Hollywood yeah. rumors again. Awesome. I love that, Jay. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, Mosky. Coming up. Thanks. My friend, Anthony Kern, Representative Anthony Kern, coming up straight ahead.